So now we're looking at the uh, proximal part of an upper limb model where we can see some uh, structures of the brachial plexus here and then some of the nerve, um, the cords and then some nerve branches uh, from uh, wrapping around the axillary artery here. Now, to my way of thinking, the plexus here is not really clear enough for me to want to pin structures up here and, and ask you to identify them. Okay, they are here, but I wouldn't really be pinning these and saying, well, tell me which cord and which, um, or, you know, which division things are, simply because we have better models where things are clearer. It's not to say that they're not here and we could work it out, but I prefer the other models for those sort of things. Okay, so don't stress about up here. This is just some structures of the plexus and, and then we can look at the cords and branches as we come down here. Mainly it's the branches we're interested in here though, and you can see them all in yellow. So if we move in a bit closer, we can see that the first branch to come off the plexus here is disappearing down past subscapularis into a little space just distal to that inferior border of the subscapularis muscle. So that will be the axillary nerve coming off the posterior cord. Then the next one to disappear, here in the middle of the axilla, this one here will be the musculocutaneous nerve, and it's disappearing into the coracobrachialis muscle, which we can just see here. So firstly we have axillary, then we have musculocutaneous, then the third one will be disappearing into the tricep, and that's the radial nerve. Now, on this model, you can clearly see all three. So it's hopefully pretty easy to spot them all and just go, oh, axillary, musculocutaneous, radial. That's the order that they go in. If you're looking at a specimen, if you can see one of these, often you can't see the others because they're covered up by structures you've had to move out of the way to see the one you can see. So you need to know where they go. So make sure you remember that the axillary nerve is associated with subscapularis. It doesn't go into it, but it goes just over the bottom edge of it. The musculocutaneous goes into coracobrachialis. So if you're seeing a nerve going into that muscle, it's got to be that one. You can't miss it if it's, if it's there. And then we've got the radial nerve going into the tricep with the deep brachial artery travelling with it. So again, if you know where they're going, uh, and one of them is pinned and you can't see the others, it shouldn't be a mystery. You should be able to work out which one you're looking at. Then if we have a look at uh, the nerves that are continuing on down, down the arm and being quite visible here from a medial point of view, we've got a medial view here of a right upper limb. On this model, it's a little bit indistinct here um, because they're all just uh, kind of painted in uh, along with the artery, which is, which is just under them there. But once they separate, very easy to see, hopefully, that this is going to be the ulnar nerve travelling down towards the medial epicondyle and going in between the epicondyle and the olecranon. On any specimen, that should be quite visible because um, even if the nerve is loose up here in the arm and, and can move around the place a bit, here it should be anchored. So if you can see that the, that the nerve you're looking at is going between the medial epicondyle and the olecranon, it has to be the ulnar nerve. Very rarely do we actually remove them from that position, so it should be anchored there. Likewise, this one here, the median nerve, should be anchored here where it goes under the bicipital aponeurosis with the brachial artery. And again, very rarely do we cut that, those structures or anything here and, and have it, uh, the median nerve be loose. So usually, you'll be able to spot it going here. So if there's a nerve going in here, with the brachial artery under the aponeurosis median. If it's going down here between the epicondyle and the, the olecranon ulnar nerve. And then of course we can follow them again down through the forearm. So here we've got the ulnar nerve travelling with the ulnar artery on the medial side. Here we've got the median nerve travelling right down the, the midline. Obviously it's going to be quite deep, or well they're both quite deep, but the member, remember that the median nerve becomes superficial about five centimetres um, just proximal to the flexor retinaculum. So somewhere about here, the median nerve usually makes an appearance and you can see it being quite superficial here. It's surrounded by a whole lot of tendons. And so of course, at first glance, it looks like a tendon. But it is ever so slightly different in colour and a bit less shiny. 
So it looks a bit more straw coloured than the tendons, which are a bit more silvery and shiny looking. Uh, and hopefully you can tell it apart that way. Now remember in the exam you can't touch the specimens, so get used to being able to identify that one by sight. It, it is possible, but practice it now so that you will be able to do it when it comes to exam time. So that's from an anterior point of view there on the forearm. If we then move the, the model over, so now we're looking at a kind of lateral and posterior point of view here. Here just distal to uh, our friend Terrace Minor, here we've got a little quadrangular space that the axillary nerve has just come through. So here's the posterior circumflex humeral artery. Here's the axillary nerve travelling with it. So you can see them wrapping around the surgical neck of the humerus from a posterior and lateral point of view. The other thing, structure that we can see here that's really cool, here's the radial nerve travelling down the back of the humerus in between a couple of heads there, the lateral and long heads of the triceps brachii. I don't think we have necessarily have any specimens where you can see this part of the radial nerve though, but it's bu shown beautifully here on the model. Then if we come down towards the anterior aspect of the elbow joint, here again, if brachioradialis and extensor carpi radialis longus and brevis are removed, we can see the radial nerve here, and we can see it split into a superficial branch of the radial nerve or superficial radial nerve, and then the deep branch, which goes into supinator. It actually enters supinator. Now after that, um, we're not going to find the, um, the deep branch again on this model or on a, I think on any of the specimens that we have, but you can find the superficial radial here and you can see it emerging, <laughs> you can, if you look in the right spot, I'm sorry, you can see it emerging distally here between extensor carpi radialis longus and brachioradialis tendons. So that is the superficial branch of the radial nerve. Now you can see where it runs and just make sure that you understand that it's deep here under brachioradialis but it emerges more distally here. The other nerve, that the reason I'm making a point of that is the uh, there is another nerve that travels in the same place but it's superficial and this nerve here is the continuation of the musculocutaneous nerve and it comes out from between the biceps brachii and brachialis and it's called the lateral cutaneous nerve of the forearm. Now that one will travel superficial to brachioradialis along here and it will end uh, on the specimens because it's a cutaneous nerve and the skin has been removed it will just end somewhere about here so it will just be a little a, a little skinny nerve that just gets skinnier and skinnier until it gets to about here and then it will just end and of course because it's not attached to anything you could find it anywhere so please bear that in mind if you see it coming out between biceps brachii and brachialis it's the lateral cutaneous nerve of the forearm. If I were to pin it in an exam, I would lay it in, in the position that you would find it in in the body. Likewise with the deep branch of the radial nerve. They run in very much the same spot, but one is deep until the distal half of the forearm, and the other one will be superficial in the proximal half of the forearm. 